Father's Day. And uh, we're uh, just uh, so grateful to have godly men. And uh, we just ask God's blessing upon each and every one of you. And, uh, you know, I, I didn't preach a Mother's Day message. And I'm not going to preach a Father's Day message. So I can do one of two things. I can tell you how you need to buck up, or I can tell you how great you are. And um, so, uh, buck up and be great. Amen? <laughs> the end. Now we're going to go ahead and get into, uh, back into Acts. Uh, let me just also remind you, since we are going like a verse-by-verse -verse study through Acts, uh, I want to remind you that uh, all these messages are recorded. They are on our website, so if you happen to have to miss a Sunday, uh, you can go back and catch up. Uh, EvansvilleCrosswalk.com. EvansvilleCrosswalk.com. And also, if you do miss and you would like to, 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 to give, you can always give through EvansvilleCrosswalk.com. It's very easy to do. You just click, click, type, click, and you're done. Something like that. So I just want to let you know that uh, we do have that uh, available to you if you uh, need that. All right. Acts. We're going to be looking at chapter 3 this morning, beginning with verse 11. Acts chapter 3, verse 11. Now, as the lame man that we talked about last week was healed, held on, to Peter and John, all the people ran together to them in the porch, which is called Solomon's, greatly amazed. We see the lame man here who is no longer lame. Amen? We saw that great healing last Sunday. We see this man, it says he held on to Peter. He clung to Peter. Normally in the Bible when you see somebody healed, it says, you know, they ran off and told everybody or he said, go your way and, and don't tell anybody or they went about just celebrating what had just happened to them. I can see, I can hear, I can walk. And they're just excited and they kind of move on and, and enjoy their newfound physical freedom. But here we see something a little bit different. It says, this man clung to Peter. He clung to him. He was right there with him. He wasn't going anywhere. Now the word held on to or to hold on means to grasp. It means to adhere. It means to remain. I looked up some different translations of this word and this phrase. And one of them is firmly clung to Peter. Another translation says he had his hands on Peter. I mean, he was right there hanging on to him. Another one says he wouldn't let go of Peter. Another one says he threw his arms around Peter. But it wasn't just like a big hug. I mean, he was just holding on to Peter. Where Peter went, this man was going. He was just so thrilled with what had happened in his life that he wasn't going anywhere. It was an ongoing thing. And we see that this man is still there over in chapter 4 and verse 16. He is joined to them. He actually may have went to jail with them. I mean, this guy wasn't going anywhere. And we'll also find when we get to chapter 4 it, uh, that uh, uh, Peter, uh, he was present when Peter and John were being t interrogated in a private setting. I mean, this lame man is like a perpetual photo bomber. I mean, wherever you see Peter and John, you see this man right there in the background. He's still hanging on. He's still clinging. He's still adhering to Peter after this miracle took place. Now, the Greek word held on portrays the, the meaning of forceful and aggressive. He was forceful about being present with them. He was forceful about hanging on to them. And it's not only used in the physical sense, but it's also used to describe his attitude. He had an attitude. I'm not going anywhere. I am here to stay. I am staying. I am sticking with these guys. Why? Because of what Jesus did. Amen? 
because of what Jesus did in his life. You know, no other religion has the attraction that Jesus has. Islam doesn't have that much of an attraction. Buddhism, not attractive. Even Christianity is not all that attractive sometimes, amen? Come on. A lot of times, Christianity can be downright ugly because of people's Christianity. That's why many people aren't in church today because they said, if that is a Christian, I don't want anything to do with it. Christianity sometimes is not all that attractive, but Jesus. But Jesus, that's a different story. Jesus just gets better all the time. You know, everything else in life seems to get smaller. But Jesus gets bigger. I remember when I was a kid, we used to go out, I mean, it, at that time it seemed like a long drive, and it seemed like we were just way out in the country, which we really were, but... Uh, uh, there was a, a lady who was a friend of the family. Her name was Mrs. Shepherd, and uh, you know I always thought she was related because we, you know, we always had such contact with her. We'd go and spend the night with her there in Kentucky. Sometimes it was like just out of think what's it, Lake or Dixon or somewhere over that way. But it was out, and I remember telling Cheryl, as a matter of fact, I said, "Oh, she had this huge house." And this driveway just went on forever. I mean, it was, the house was like way back. And there was this long driveway. But we go by and, you know, it's been a lot of years ago. But in my adult life, we went back to look at that house. I found it and drove by. Guess what? That house wasn't really that big. And that driveway really wasn't that long. But it, it, it got smaller as time went on. I can remember... We had a lot of family relatives that weren't really related. But uh, there was a gentleman, we, I called him Uncle Bob. You know, he, you know, he had a thing for my mom. You know, he was always trying to get her to go out. Well, my mom, when my dad died, uh, uh, he, uh, you know, she just never dated. She never got married or anything. But you know, Bob didn't have a chance. You know, but he always tried. And, and he tried to get to her through me. You know, by being nice to me, and, and uh, anyway, I remember one time I did something for him. He, he pulls his billfold out and he hands me a five-dollar bill. So I told my mom about it. Guess what my mom made me do? Give it back. I had to give it back. Because <laughs> she was on to Uncle Bob. <laughs> she knew what he was all about. She said, "If he was your dad, he wouldn't pay any attention to you." That's kind of what mom was. <laughs> Had a guy one time. I had a, 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 a probation officer. Yeah, I had a little trouble. I was riding a motorcycle without a license, and they caught me. And I was about about 12 years old, 11, 12 years old. And so I had to see this probation officer like you know six or seven times. And, and uh, he was sitting there, and he asked my mom. He says, "So you drink coffee?" She said, "No." Said, well, do you have some coffee here? She said, well, "Yeah." So maybe I could come by and get a cup of coffee sometime. Said, Why would you want to do that? You get a cup of coffee at McDonald's. <laughs> that was my mom. Didn't have a clue. But back to that five dollars. That five dollars, man, that seemed like a fortune to me at, at uh, you know six years old or however old I was. Five, well, yeah, five or six years old maybe. That seemed like a fortune. You know, I mean, I appreciate five dollars today, but it just doesn't have the same impact that it had back then. So, things get smaller, but Jesus, Jesus just keeps getting bigger. So, these folks, they saw this lame man whom they knew totally healed. Now, you know, you hear about somebody getting healed, or you see on TV somebody getting healed, you know, our skeptical mind says, well, you know, were they really sick? Were they really crippled? You know, is that real? But when it's somebody you know, and you know the situation, 
you know they were crippled, like I shared about that young teenage girl when I was in Brayton, Florida. And I knew she was crippled. She came with those braces every week. And I saw her healed. And I saw that miracle. And I saw her walking normal ever since. I knew that was a miracle. I knew that she was totally healed. And that's the way it was with this lame man. They saw him every week. Every time they went to the temple, they saw this lame man. They knew his history. He'd been that way for 40 years. And all of a sudden, he is healed. And they were amazed, it said. They were greatly amazed. But the only problem, church, is this. They were focused on Peter and John. They were thinking Peter and John were all that. They were thinking, wow, look what these guys did. Aren't they something? And they wanted to get close to Peter and John, just like this lame man wanted to get close and hang on and cling to and adhere to Peter. That's the way they were. So, Peter recognized what was going on. Peter didn't want the glory, unlike a lot of folks today who want the glory so they can write a book or make a movie about it. But Peter did not want the fame. He did not want the glory. He immediately started pointing them to Jesus. He begins to redirect their focus to be on Jesus. Back when we were having prayer, right before the service, Ron led us in prayer. And he said, Lord, uh, help us to focus on Jesus this morning. I said, you know, that's the topic of my message this morning, is to focus on Jesus. Sometimes that's the pastor's most difficult job. Sometimes it may be because people are too focused on the pastor. Or that they may be the pastor in such high esteem that their focus is not on Jesus. Or it may be they're so focused on the pastor's faults that they are not focused on Jesus. I hope I fall somewhere in between. <laughs> I don't want to be too high up on the pedestal, but again, I don't want to be you know, under somebody's feet. But they're not focused on Jesus. You know, we need to get our eyes off a pastor. We need to get our eyes off the evangelist. We need to get our eyes off the denominations and organizations. And we need to get our eyes on Jesus. We need to focus on Jesus. I tell you, that will change your life. That will change the life of your church. That will change a city. If believers will get their eyes on Jesus. If I can keep you focused, if I can get you focused and keep you focused on Jesus, I'll feel like I'm doing my job. If I look at you and you're just so in love with Jesus, if I look at you and that's all you can talk about is Jesus, I'll say, you know what? I mean, if it has anything to do with what's going on here, I feel like I'm doing my job. You know, we can focus on so many things. We can focus on the temperature of the church. Amen? How I many were focused last week on... Now, we want you comfortable, but you know what? We ought to be able to worship Jesus in spite of it being hot. You know, you can get your... Your focus on the songs that we sing or don't sing. You know, we can get our focus on the sermon. It's too long or too short. Although I haven't had too many complaints on too short. But we can get our eyes, we can get focused on the wrong thing many times. I'll just share the letter that I received from a missionary uh, yesterday. And I'm not going to go into detail on that letter. But I do want to say this. He was talking about how he had a verse where he preached in, in a thunderstorm, basically. They were having an outdoor meeting. There was hundreds of people that showed up for this meeting. It's pouring down rain. And what did they do? Oh, well, it's raining. I guess we're going to go home and, and forget about the meeting. No, they stood out there in the pouring down rain, the thunder and the lightning, and sang worship songs and prayed and just for three hours. So finally, this preacher, this evangelist, this missionary said, you know, it's not going to quit raining. So he went out there in the thunderstorm and preached and, and prayed for people and saw people healed and delivered. Where do you think their focus was? You've got to be focused on Jesus to do something like that. I'm afraid here in America, perhaps we don't have that kind of focus. Sometimes we get up and look outside. Oh, it's raining. I think I'll just stay in. I don't want to get out in the rain. Even though we've got a car to drive us there, we've got an umbrella to put over our 
head. Oh, I don't think I'll go today. Here is the difference. Their focus was on Jesus. I remember when I lived in Florida, there was a, a, a snake at, at the edge of a pond. And uh, that snake was focused on us. It was so focused that a snapping turtle came up and snapped off the bottom part of his body. He did not move one bit. He just focused on us. You see, we need to be that focused. Where it doesn't really matter what's going on around us. All we see is Jesus. He is just the one that we're focused on. The one that we're consumed with. We need to keep our focus on Him. That's what they said here. They said, focus on Jesus. If we will determine to focus on Jesus, I can promise you that you will not be disappointed. You will be amazed if you keep your focus on Him. Don't focus on me. You'll be disappointed. Don't focus on anybody on this platform. You'll be disappointed. Don't focus on anybody in the church. You'll be disappointed. We're humans and we make mistakes and at some point in time, you'll be disappointed. You know, you don't even focus on miracles that take place because that will wane and you will be disappointed. You've got to keep your focus on Jesus. He will not disappoint. You know, if you have your focus on Jesus, people can talk about you, they can hate you, and I'll tell you, church, you won't even care because you're focused on Jesus. You know what they said? I really don't care what they said. I only really care what Jesus says. I'm focused on Him. Circumstances in your life can be terrible, but it will not affect you because you're focused on Jesus. When you're tempted, focus on Jesus. That's the only way you can overcome. You know, overcoming temptation is not in just fighting it and struggling against it. No, you just, the more you're tempted, the more you focus on Jesus. What you focus on gets bigger. If you focus on that temptation, it's just going to grow. If you focus on your circumstances, they're just going to grow. We've got to focus on Jesus. Don't focus on your mountain. Focus on Jesus. What you talk about will consume you. Let me say that again. What you talk about will consume you. Don't talk about your problems. Don't look at your problems constantly. Talk about Jesus. Look to Jesus. There's a chorus we used to sing. Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full. What is that? Just being focused. Amen. Look full into His wonderful face. And the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of His glory and grace. I can remember when I got saved. Yeah, I can remember that long, that long ago. It's been a lot of years ago. I was 18 years old. You know, when I got saved, Jesus was my only focus. I mean, I had a life transformation. I mean, everything in my life did 180 years. It was a totally different life. I was consumed with Jesus. I was one of those guys that probably annoyed you. You know, because, I mean, it was all about Jesus. I couldn't go to church enough. I, everywhere I found that had a service, I went to service. I couldn't read my Bible enough. I couldn't listen to enough teaching tapes. My focus was on Jesus. I'm still focused on Jesus. <clears throat> I have to admit, not to the same degree I was then, but that's my heart, to be that focused. You know, I have a lot of different responsibilities now, and things competing for my attention, but I still long for those things. I still long to just gaze into His eyes, to just spend that kind of time with We at Crosswalk Fellowship need to focus on Jesus. You show me a church that's focused on Jesus, I'll show you a church that's going to explode. In a good way. Focus on Jesus. You know what Jesus said? He said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. If we're focused on Jesus, and lifting Jesus up. 
that makes all the difference in the world. Bow your heads with me. Hallelujah. Charity, would you come, please? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If you take a moment and just look into his face. Just look into the face of Jesus. Just meditate for a few moments on his goodness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me ask you a question. Have you lost your focus? Has everything else seemed to grab your attention? If it has, you can make a change today. You can, right where you're sitting, you can just say, Lord, I've lost my focus. Pastor talked about this morning. That's where I want to be. I want to be consumed with you. I want to be consumed with your presence. I believe Jesus will answer that prayer this morning for you. Look unto Jesus. Lord, we're careful to give you the praise. 